Hey, it's Andrew from Pre-Denning Dental School Admissions Advising, where we help you on your path to getting accepted into dental school your first time applying, maximizing your dream school acceptances and your scholarships. In this video, I'm going to go over how to calculate your different types of GPAs, including your overall GPA for the dental school application service and all of the intricacies that are involved or can affect your GPA calculation. And if you're just interested in how to calculate your science GPA, which dental school admissions committees weigh heavily, I'll be telling you how to do that near the end, so make sure to stick around for that. Dental schools consider a variety of different GPAs when screening your candidacy to determine whether you get an interview or get rejected. These GPAs, what they're composed of and how to calculate them is a bit confusing to a lot of people, so in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what courses go into your different GPAs, which courses do not count towards your GPA, and how to calculate those different GPAs so you know where you stand. As I go through how to calculate your GPA, I'll be using a GPA calculator. This makes it super simple and easy to calculate your different GPAs, such as your overall GPA, your science GPA, your non-science GPA, and also includes a comprehensive list of courses that count towards your science GPA, many of which may surprise you. You can download that free GPA calculator at predenting.com forward slash GPA calculator and even use it to follow along with me as I go through an example. So first we'll go through how to calculate your overall GPA semester by semester or quarter by quarter if you're at a college that uses the quarter system. This is the GPA calculator I'm gonna be using. It lays everything out for you. It makes it super simple to calculate your GPA. You can see that there's gonna be instructions on page one. The important thing to note here is that ADSAS uses their own grade point scale when calculating your GPA. And what I mean by that is some colleges and your college may count an A plus as a 4.33. What's important to know is this is the scale that ADSAS uses. And I can tell you that because I'm on the ADSAS advisory board for the dental school application. So this is the scale you'll wanna use for all your courses and grades because this is what ADSAS is going to use. It's gonna be differentiating grade points you receive for pluses and minus grades. So for example, you see a B plus is a three, three, a B is a three, a B minus is a 2.7, so on and so forth. So you can rely on this Excel sheet for that but what you really wanna to do to calculate your GPA is to go into the second tab, either called semesters or quarters, depending on if you are at a school that uses the semester or quarter system, we'll say semesters for, for this example, and we can start filling out our course schedule with our course name and letter grade. You technically don't need to fill out course name and letter grade, that's not actually gonna affect your GPA, but it just makes it a lot easier to visualize, and if there's ever a discrepancy within your calculation, you can easily see where you went wrong. So we'll just say we took chemistry one and chemistry one lab, as well as calculus one and nutrition. And also English. And then we'll say that when chemistry one, we got an A, here we got an A minus. And calculus, we got a D and nutrition, we got a B minus. And then in English, we got a B plus. And then you wanna mention how many credits or units you were receiving for the course. So for chemistry one, we'll say we had three units or credits. Chemistry one lab, one, calculus, three, three, and four. And then grade points is based on what grade you got. So like I mentioned previously, an A is going to be four grade points. An A minus is only gonna be 3.7 grade points. A D is gonna be one, a B minus is gonna be 2.7, and a B plus is going to be 3.3. And again, you can find what grade points correlate to what grade right here, if you're using ADSAS. If you're using the Texas app, TMDSAS, there's a different grade point system that does not discriminate between your grade points received and plus and minus grades. So what we see is that this sheet is automatically going to calculate how many grade points you got, credit hours, and total quality points. And the quality points is really just multiplying the grade points you received by the credit hours or units that the course was. And then this all auto-populates and gives you your semester GPA. The semester GPA is simply your total quality points divided by 
your total credit hours. So it's this number divided by this number. And that gives us a 2.857 in this case. Now, there are complicated exceptions and caveats to exactly what courses get counted as part of your overall and different GPAs, which I'm gonna cover now. But before we get into that, if you're finding this video helpful, give it a like and share it with a pre-dental friend or group that can benefit from learning this. I made this video because I was once a pre-dental and I wanna help as many pre-dentals as possible. And I'd really appreciate sharing the video to help with that mission. And of course, subscribe for more videos that will help you navigate your path to getting accepted to dental school. So first, let's talk about repeated courses. If you took the same course twice, then both the first grade and the second grade will be included in the ADSAS GPA calculation. In other words, both grades will be included even if the original grade you received for that course is not included in your calculated GPA in your school's transcript because again, ADSAS uses their own way of calculating your GPA. They don't just follow how your school calculates your GPA. Next, there are pass grades. If you choose to take courses on a pass-fail grading system, this is important to know, these courses do not count towards your GPA. They don't count as either a fail or a letter grade. So for the sake of your ADSAS GPA calculation, think of this as if you never took the course if you took it on a pass-fail basis. And we'll dive into an example, seeing how that shows up and affects your GPA in a moment. But before that, let's talk about study abroad grades. Study abroad grades are only counted towards your GPA if your US or English speaking Canadian school accepts the grade and credits and has those courses from your study abroad program shown on their own school's official transcript. That's because for the sake of your ADSAS GPA, only courses from accredited US and Canadian colleges are considered. So if you have study abroad courses that only show on your transcript from the school in, let's say Spain, France, or wherever, but those courses have not been transferred and counted on your US or Canadian transcript, then it's as if you never took the course. So the courses don't work for you or against you in terms of your GPA on the ADSAS Down School application. After that, a common question arises regarding withdraw grades. These grades are really complicated and get thrown into two different pools depending on the type of withdrawal. The first pool is if the withdrawal was counted as withdrawal failing, which at some schools is denoted as WF or withdrawn with penalty, then the course will count as an F in your ADSAS GPA calculation, meaning you would have received zero grade points for the course and the credit hours do count in terms of calculating your total amount of quality points and then your semester GPA. The other pool is if you just withdrew or get something called withdraw-passing. These two types of withdrawals are not counted in your GPA. It's as if you never took the course. So you get zero grade points and zero credit hours for a withdraw or withdraw-passing. So we can go through an example in let's say this spring semester where we took both a pass fail course and received a fail in another course. So you can see how that would be calculated and how that affects your GPA. So let's say in our second semester, we took chemistry two, chemistry two lab, as well as calculus, Greek philosophy, and a writing course. And then let's say in our chemistry two class, we got an A minus. In chemistry two lab, we got a B minus. In calculus two, we got a B plus. Greek philosophy, we took for pass fail, not on the letter grade system, so we got a pass. And then writing, we took for a letter grade, but we failed the course. So then you wanna go into how many units or credits you received for these courses. We'll say chemistry two was giving us three credit hours, chemistry two lab one, calculus two was giving us three. And then here's where we dive into the pass fail situation. Remember, if you took a course on a pass fail graded basis, instead of getting a letter grade, that counts as zero credit hours. It does not affect your GPA, so we'll put zero here. And as part of that, you get zero grade points. 
So that's how it leads to zero quality points, which is gonna make it so there is no effect on your GPA from taking a pass fail course. Next, we'll go into the writing course. Let's say for the writing course, we're given three credits or units and the fail, note that this does count. We took it for letter grade, so the grade points are calculated and for an F, you're gonna get zero grade points. You can see how that really affects your GPA. But let's go here for chemistry two. Let's say since we got an A minus, that's gonna be a 3.7. For chemistry two lab, a B minus, that's a 2.7. And a B plus is a three. So then what we see is the total quality points were calculated for all this, as were the total credit hours. And then for GPA, we're simply gonna get the quality points and divide it by the credit hours. So that's what this is. You have a 2.379 semester GPA given all this. And if you want to calculate your overall GPA, at the bottom of this document, it's going to automatically calculate the credit hours you've taken in total and the quality points you've taken in total. And at the bottom, it will calculate your overall GPA based on total quality points and total credit hours. From there, you can delete courses to find out your non-science GPA, for example. And that's important to know that in the AdSAS application, there's a few different types of GPAs that are gonna be calculated and presented to the dental school admissions committees. Those are things like your undergraduate GPA, which is just a GPA composed of all of the courses you've taken during undergrad. There's also the non-science GPA, which is a GPA composed of all the non-science courses you've taken. There's also a graduate GPA, which includes only the courses you've taken as a graduate student, for example, in a master's program. There's also a BCP GPA, which is just an acronym for biology, chemistry, physics GPA. That includes all the courses you've taken in the biology, chemistry, and physics department. And then there's also the science GPA, which is really important. So the science GPA is all the courses in biology, chemistry, physics, math, and other science courses, a comprehensive list of all those other science courses is included in the first page of this Excel document in the instructions tab. You'll see a comprehensive list of all the quote other science courses. And I update that list frequently as things change because things do change in the dental school application. And to learn more about the science and BCP GPA and what courses to include when calculating your science GPA or BCP GPA, since those are really important, you'll wanna watch this next video and include some surprises in terms of the courses that do count towards your science GPA.